Hello everyone, my name is Zhi Jianyang. Today, I'm going to present our work, AR-AR, Indoor Acoustic Augmented Reality on Airphones. This is a joint work with my lab mates, Yuling and Shen, and our advisor, Ramit. We are from University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. We know that human brain has the ability to infer sound geometry. When a sound source is at angle alpha relative to the human ears, it actually creates a delay delta t alpha at the two ears. By analyzing this time difference of arrival, human can tell in which direction the sound is coming from. And we call this kind of human brain ability the binaural ability. This means, by artificially injecting delays in the two earphones, it is possible to make the brain believe that the sound is coming from a desired direction, and we call such artificially created sound binaural sound. Of course, as the user turns her head, the earphone will turn, and the sound will also turn along with it. But if we want to fix the global location of the sound source, actually we can do it. We just need to track the orientation of the human head and create a binaural sound by compensating for the head rotation. This is made possible by smart earphones that have an IMU inside. By leveraging this binaural sound from earphones, we can enable a number of new applications and this paper focused on one of these applications, Acoustic Augmented Reality, or we call it AAR. Let's imagine that you are in an airport, rushing towards your gate. AAR would offer great value in navigating you to your gate, quick and elegant. AAR can serve as a virtual person walking in front of you, and you just need to find the virtual follow me song from your earphone, and you can reach your destination. Or when you are visiting a museum, and you want some audio narrator to describe the paintings to you, when you looked at painting A, it tells you the description of painting A, and when you walked away and looked at painting B, the narrative audio will also change to painting B. Moreover, the audios are in the format of binaural audio so that it sounds just like it comes from the actual painting. This would, of course, improve the experience of such a museum visit. So to build such a system, the key research question is to design a binaural sound in the earphone so that it appears to arrive from the right relative location with respect to the earphone user. To achieve this goal, we need to focus on these three parts, basically localization, head tracking, and binaural audio. Let's first look at the first module, localization module. We want to focus on indoor localization here, because outdoor we can use GPS. We are especially interested in IMU directly, because this does not require any infrastructure and can make our AAR system deployable in any environment. IMU directly involves pulling out step count, step plans, and working direction from the IMU signal. However, previous researchers mainly pull out this signal from smartphone or smartwatch IMU, which can be easily polluted by randomly movements and making the signal quite noisy. This will lead to inaccuracy in localization. One observation, however, is that all the IMUs previous researchers rely on are at the lower part of the body. We now have smart earphone IMUs, which has a unique upper body mounting point. Can we leverage this IMU on the earphone to do better localization? It turns out, the unique mounting point of the IMU on the air offers a key opportunity. Body acted as a filter, filtering out 
all the random motions and make the signal much cleaner. Interference from the hand, arm, legs are all filtered out by the body when the signal propagates up to the air. To give you an intuitive comparison, the upper graph shows the alpha IMU signal and the lower graph shows the smartphone IMU signal. It is evident that the alpha IMU offers a much cleaner signal compared with smartphone, and this can eventually lead to a better localization result. We developed the LAR dual IMU localization algorithm that takes advantage of the clean IMU signal on the air. We jointly put the air IMU, the phone IMU, and human motion model as input to our algorithm, and the output is a better localization result. We proved that the fusion of dual IMU is effective in minimizing the localization error. And now we've covered the localization module, let's look into the head tracking module. We also use the airphone IMU for head tracking to ensure the sound comes from a fixed physical direction. This is important because let's imagine that the user has turned her head. To ensure that the virtual sound still comes from the same physical direction, we actually need to change the binaural audio's direction relative to the human head to compensate for the head turn. And head tracking is achieved by using alpha IMU, specifically gyroscope integration. And now let's look at the binaural audio module. After we get the location and the head orientation of the user, we build a binaural audio part on top of them. When the system determines that the user is near some audio annotated object, it will start to play the binaural audio. And the binaural audio's elevation angle and azimuth angle relative to the human head is determined by the relative location of the user and the annotated object as well as user's head orientation. And we generate the binaural audio by artificially injecting delays and amplitude difference to the sound at two years according to the elevation and azimuth angle we came up with on the previous slide, and we play this binaural audio through the earphones of the user. We update the binaural audio in real time when the user's location or head orientation has changed, and by now, we have a crude system ready. So we've talked about localization, head tracking, and binaural audio, and we build a binaural audio on top of localization and head tracking. But actually there's a problem here. Any kind of directly will drift. A better algorithm can only slower the drift. So this means we need to find some calibration opportunity for IMU directly. And our key intuition is that human brain has the ability to perceive binaural audio, and we can actually use this human brain ability to calibrate. Let's consider the following scenario. When a user is looking at a painting, the red arrow is the direction that the binaural audio should come from. However, the user feels that the binaural audio comes from the direction of the green arrow. This means the system actually thinks the user is to the left of her actual location. And if the user finds out what she hears and what she sees has some inconsistency, then this means she needs to do calibration. And to calibrate, the user just needs to look at the painting and tell the system, calibrate me. We designed a way to determine the user's relative location to the painting using user scaling direction. And by using this procedure to do calibration, we can minimize the localization error, and localization will not diverge. By now, we've covered the system design of LAR. LAR has the localization module, head tracking module, and binaural audio module. 
and we also use the human's ability to perceive binaural audio as opportunistic recalibration opportunities. And upon all these modules, we build the end-to-end -end LAR system. We implemented our LAR system on off-the-shelf hardware and evaluated it in our building lobby. We placed a number of audio annotations in the lobby and asked users to retrieve them. When the user is near a specific object, the audio annotation will be played through the L phone and we ask the user to figure out the specific annotation for a given object, and the results are promising. Let me give you some idea of the end-to-end -end performance of the LAR system. We introduced the metric of Object Identification Error, or OIE. Users can retrieve information from a wrong object due to confusion, and OIE is the distance between the object the user wants to retrieve and the object that the user actually retrieved from. And from the results, we can see that in 80% of the cases, OIE equals to zero. This means the user retrieved from the correct object and there is no confusion. And in the rest 20% of the cases, the medium OIE is around 2.5 meters, meaning that the users got confused with another object which is 2.5 meters away. For more evaluation results, please refer to our paper. And finally, let me use this slide to conclude my presentation. We present LAR, a practical solution for indoor acoustic augmented reality. We jointly use L4 IMU and phone IMU to do better than recording. We identify humans' ability to perceive binaural sound as calibration opportunities. And we build the LAR system on off-the-shelf mobile devices and evaluated it in real-world settings, and the results are promising. For more details, please read our paper. Thanks.